You're listening to Smithy's TGW Promotions, joined now by Paul Gallon. Paul, thanks for your time. No worries, thanks for having me. First of all, talk us through why you elected to accept this fight, to accept the challenge that was presented to you from Hermanini Purcell for this rematch January 29 up here at Toowoomba. You know, that's definitely they, um, you know, professional boxing. It's a professional sport, and, um, you know, I'm going to make the best decision, you know, for, for me as, you know, as a professional. And, um, you know, what, the, the timing of it just worked out as far as what, when they wanted to do the fight. Um, and then you managed to do the negotiating, and then, uh, you know, it turned out to be a deal we were happy with. And uh, that's what we're with it. And um, I know Herman's been up for a rematch ever since our first fight, and, um, you know, I suppose it would make playing footy. I get any, any opportunity during the year. And, um, but as I said, mate, the, um, you know, the, the deal they come up with uh, work for us, so we're, we're going to get it done. Did you find it disrespectful in any way, I guess, after the last fight that they've chased you pretty hard, not just recently, but since that first fight for a rematch? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I just think, honestly, I wasn't happy the way they went, went about it this time. And not, not so much for me personally. I mean, you know, I'm happy with the fight. Um, you know, I think it's criticism and I suppose speculation all the time so it wasn't that it was the fact that I was overseas um, I, I didn't know any of the negotiations were really going on um, and as I said mate, it's a professional sport um, you know I, I'm a person who's made my name in another sport and, and Herman wants to you know, use part of that to make his name and you know oh, that's fine I, I can accept that but it's got to be a um, you know commercially good enough deal for myself and you know, ever since we first fought a couple of years ago, they've, they've, they've never even come up with any sort of offer for me to fight him again. Uh, not that I know of, anyway. And, um, you know, and, and, and as I said to the floor, the, the, the deal is now where we want it to be, and um, and then just sort it all out so we can, um, you know, we can get it done on the 29th of January and, you know, have to get the win again. So when you say you, you, know, you weren't totally happy with how they went about it, how do you think they should have went about it then this time around? Oh, uh, look, I, you know, I, I just thought they could have directly by manager. I, I'd spoken to him and I'd spoken to him to text him personally. Um, you know, via Twitter, we follow each other on Twitter, so I would, I would do we text each other personally. And he, he, he asked me for a rematch straight up. He said, would you like a rematch? So the first thing I said to him, I said, mate, I'm willing to do it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, the deal has to be right. And, um, you know, all that goes through my manager. Um, and I, I never heard anything back until, you know, I was, I was on a family holiday uh, overseas and, um, you know, all this negotiation had been going on without me knowing it had been the paper for two or three days. And uh, as I said, it, it, didn't, it didn't affect me so much. It's just more that, you know, the sport of boxing is a hard sport. People do, people do it very tough. And, um, you know, I, I didn't like those sort of figures being thrown out there compared to what, you know, so some blokes are wearing on a Friday or Saturday night. So I just, uh, I know it's probably the only thing that annoyed me, but, you know, at least, I got nothing against Herman personally. Um, you know, from what I know, he's a good young guy. So you weren't aware that challenges were being made to you because you were overseas? No, I wasn't aware at all. The, the only, the only um, correspondence I'd had with him was, was through Herman himself. Uh, that was probably, uh, well, I couldn't tell you exactly, probably at least six weeks ago, where um, we looked at some fights in the off-season and the, the finish that fight, that was, that was actually on the weekend. Uh, they asked me if I was interested um, in fighting Joel Clifton, who I think is still the current Queensland heavyweight champion. I, and I knew nothing about Joel except when I checked his record, but he fought Herman. So I, I, that's why I got in contact with Herman to see if there's any sort of footage of it or, you know, ask him a little bit about it. And he, look, he, he pretty much brushed it off straight away and said, oh, no, I don't have any mate, but what about a rematch with me? And, and then I was when I said, look, he's got a building manager. And as I said, I... Um, had the fight in New Zealand, uh, and immediately the next day, uh, left to go overseas. And um, probably a day or two before I left, I got uh, Michael Witt, who was a, 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 I went to school with his older brother, uh, but he, he also knows that his blokes as well who were doing the show. And um, he, he popped up to me on Twitter and uh, told me what was going on, and uh, yeah, that, that was the first I'd heard of it. But isn't that the duty of your manager to tell you that? Can yeah, I ask? Absolutely, mate. And if I had if I had another season on a family holiday, uh, enjoying myself and relaxing, I'm sure he would have told me. But uh, my manager knows exactly um, what what a reasonable deal is for myself. And um, if he thought it was reasonable, he would have told me. Absolutely, no doubt about that. But obviously, whatever he was being offered in the first place wasn't reasonable. So he he didn't really bother bother um, 
you know, Johnny, which, uh, which uh, as I said, he, he looks after that sort of stuff for me, and I, I trust him implicitly with it, and uh, there's no issue there at all. Well, we're here now. The fight is going to happen. You'll be up here on January 29. Um, what's your thoughts on a rematch? The first one had a bit of everything, um, from yourself being knocked down to coming back to stopping Herman to well, even a little bit of a scuffle after the fight. You, you know, It had a lot of things a lot of people talked about it for a long time, particularly up here. What do you expect the second time around? Um, oh, look, I expect the same You know, we're, we're both two blokes are going to go out and, and not leave too much out there. Um, you know, he obviously made a big mistake last time by for some reason giving me a free shot. He he's come out and admitted recently he just ran out of gas and um you now well, whatever that's uh, the reason he gave it to me or not, I'm not too sure, but it, it worked against me in the end, so I hold it doubt I'll get one of them. <laughs> Unless he wants to give me another one. But um you know, I, I, he's a big puncher, I know that. There's a, you know, I've got no doubt that if he hits me one of his big shots it's gonna hurt. But um you know, I think I think I said in a column on the weekend on I'm confident in my fitness. I'm confident in, in, in our, our fit at the time I'll be and, and my strength. And um, you know, unless you unless you hit me with them shots, I'm, I'm very tough and I can win. You were quoted saying the other day we spoke obviously about that that you feel that's his only chance is to knock you out because you feel you're a better boxer, you're stronger, you're fitter, and all the rest of it. That that's how you feel about this fight, not in an arrogant way. That's just how you see it. Yeah, that that's yeah, that's that's my um. You know, that, that's what I think. Uh, like I said, he's a, he's a big puncher. He's had um, this will be his twelfth fight, and and I look at some of his fights that have gone longer than uh, four rounds, and uh, you know I, I don't think he's won one. Um, you know when when the um, when the offer was given to me, we said we'll take it over six. They wouldn't do it over six, um, so we've ended up agreeing on five, which is something I haven't seen before. But you know, I'm not I'm not that big up on boxing, so you yeah, obviously want to go more than four rounds, but. We've managed to get another round out of him, and I think that's purely because of how powerful he is, and he he simply doesn't have the fitness to, you know, to, to keep going. And um, as I said, if, if he doesn't get me one of these big shots in the, I suppose the early rounds, I'm, I'm confident I can win. So is that your plan? Is to basically take him into the deep waters, like you're saying, into those deep rounds where you think your superior fitness and will no doubt carry you through? Oh, look, mate, I, I don't know what the plan is. I mean, it's still you know, a couple of months away at the moment. I haven't even started training for it. I'm back in football at mode at the moment and um, you know, head on the holiday with the family next week and when I come back uh, you know middle of December we'll get right into it then but so I'm sure that the coach will work something out Graham, will, Graham Shaw will figure something out for me but you know, I think we're just going there and just and take it as it goes to be honest I mean I'm certainly not going to run away from him for the first two or three rounds and let him have his own way and try to come home the last two I'm going to um, I'm in there uh, you know obviously trying not to get hit and hit him, hit him as much as I can and um, you know, I think I can do that. Do you feel, looking back on that first fight, and you spoke about that where he gave you a couple of free shots and he was still standing, do you have any concerns that, you know, two free hits and you couldn't drop him? Oh, no, not at all, mate. I mean, I'm, I've never come out and tried to say I'm a, I'm a perfectly power puncher. I'm just a bloke who gets you and does his best. And um, at, at the end of the day, you look at the record, I won by 2KO. I don't care how I did it, so... And um, you know, I'd like to say I'm going to win by knockout again this one, but you know, that, that's what that's what everyone wants to do when they go in there. But you know, to be honest, whether it happens or not, I don't care as long as I win, which I'm, I'm confident I'll do. In the first fight, when he put you down, what were you thinking? Look, he, he, he was a big shot, obviously, but uh, I had me wits about me you know, the whole way down. I, I knew I knew on the way down I was, I was falling over. Um, and uh, yeah, I got straight up and I, and I was fine. I wasn't really rattled by it at all. But you know, I, I knew I uh, had to be better than that and, and keep my hands up and not let it happen again. Because uh, you yeah, know, as I said, mate, no doubt he's a big puncher. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious to see that, he, that he's a big puncher. So you know, I don't be taking too many shots like that. But unfortunately, that time I, I still had me wits about me and I managed to get up and, and finish that round. And uh, you know, obviously, it was all over at the, by the end of round two. Do you feel you'll be a better fighter this time around? You, you've had a few fights in between, so see obviously yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean, you know, I, I suppose the one thing with myself is, you know, I, I get to a point in boxing where, where I improve a hell of a lot over the off season, and you know, I go back to rugby league, and you know, I, I don't do any training in the season at all. I just don't have time to to do the boxing training and then the footy. It's just, it's just takes up too much time. It's too demanding and. To be able to, to train boxing as well and spa, etc., it's just it's just impossible. So you sort of, I sort of get to the end of um, September, October, and 
have to start all over again. So you know, the, the good thing for me with this fight is that it is at the end of January. Um, so uh, as far as my, my boxing goes, I should be you know as good as I'm going to get at, at at that particular time because once that's over, I, I go straight back to footy. So yeah, you know, I'm hoping I'll be better, and, and I'm going to have to be. I mean, he, he's obviously, as I said, it'll be a tough fight, which is a um, you know decent amount of experience. So I'm, I'm going to have to be better. Do you feel in any ways since Herman knocked you down in that first fight that perhaps they're living off your name and that's what they've used to carry themselves from that point? Oh, mate, no, not at all. I, I don't feel that. You know, as I said, he he, uh, he did put me down. Um, at the end of the day, it's boxing. You know, you, you're going to get hit. Um, at the end of the day, I'll come back and won. So, you know, and, and look, he, he, is, he is using my name to make a name for himself. It's, but, you know what, if I was him, I'd be doing the same thing. It's just the way boxing is. And, you know, the, the, more, the more I've done over the last couple of years, the more you learn that, you know, if you have opportunities like this, um, with, the, with the name in front of you, you have to do it. Otherwise, you know, you just, you know, you sort of bumble along doing your best. But, you know, it, it's at some times, unless, you, unless you're fighting for Australian titles or, or, you know, trying to get up in the world rankings, it's, it's hard to make a good dollar out of it. So um, I've got no doubt they're using, they're using me up to, to make a name for him. But, you know, I understand that. And I don't begrudge him for that at all. And this fight, both fighters um, have, you know, there's a lot of notice for this fight and everything. It'll it'll be one where both guys will, you know, know the date, know the time that they'll come into it fit, strong and ready to go. Yeah, that's right. We'll both be ready. Um, that's for sure. I mean, there's, there's no doubt he'll be ready for it. And, and as I said, come come uh, sort of start of mid December, I'll be I'll be training for it. I feel pretty fit at the moment already. You know, I've had um, you know, a good good two or three weeks back at training for the footy now, so. You know, the ankle injury I had at MD is better, so I've been able to do a, a lot of running the past few weeks, and um, you know, touch wood, nothing sort of goes wrong between now and the 29th, and I'll be um, I'll be sitting ready. You run out to Suncorp Stadium as captain of New South Wales, and everyone boos you and all the rest of it. I'm going to guess that walking into rumours international to Woomba with everyone booing is not going to bother you either. Uh, yeah, I look mate, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's never nice. <laughs> you know, people not liking you, but uh, it's just the way it is. I accept on that person, and yeah, to say it's going to to say it doesn't bother me. Um, you know, well, that's that, that's not 100 percent truthful, but I know I know on the night I've, I've got a job that I have to do, and you know, when it's playing rugby league, I, I've got to you know, I fit into a team, and I have to do my job in that team, and and you know, for, fortunately, this, this sort of case, I, I do it on my own. I've only got my, myself to rely on, and. Um, you know, nothing, no amount of booing or anything else will take you know, my focus off that and I'll be ready to go. But are you looking forward to coming to Toowoomba? You are a big name and why you might be the most hated man in Queensland, you're a big name obviously in rugby league for, for what you've been able to achieve and, and who you are. Are you excited to come to a place like Toowoomba where your presence is no doubt going to create a buzz for uh, for a country city like Toowoomba? Yeah, I am to be honest. And look, I just spent the past couple of days in Adelaide and I actually had a few people ask me down there, about it down there, and a couple of them said they're going to it and they're, they're, they're going to book accommodation. So, I mean, if things can, um, little things like this can help the town out and, and, and take some money into the town and maybe good for Toowoomba, um, yeah, that, that's fine. That's, I suppose that's what it's all about. I mean, I know Brendan Smith, who's putting the show on, and his famous trainer, he's been there his whole life, and, um, you know, Smith's gym's pretty renowned up there. So, uh, I'm glad I can be a part of it. And, uh, as I said, hopefully it helps the town out and, and we can all have a good night. And you've been to Toowoomba before? Yeah, I went to Toowoomba years ago. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm talking probably 10 or 12 years ago that we had, the, I think, this, look, I can't remember, some sort of country carnival you guys have up there. and uh, They took the NRL road train up there. It used to be called back in the day and uh, spent a couple of days up there and you know, promoting the game and, uh, you know, on the road train and... Yeah, it was good. Obviously, I wasn't playing State of Origin back then, so not so many people hated me. <laughs> it, was a bit, it was a bit easier, but yeah, as I said, mate, I, hopefully this is a good thing for the town. Um, you know, create a lot of interest, so that we you know, get get a lot of people going in there, and uh, you know, be a good night. And a guy you would have played a bit of footy with, Dean Bosnich, who's up in this neck of the woods now, uh, coach of the under twenty Clyde Styles. So uh, you'll have one familiar yeah, face, Bos- perhaps one that won't yeah, be booing you. Yeah, Bos-, Bos contacted me the other day. He actually he said if we could catch up, we'd catch up, but I mean, I don't. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. I'm, I'm probably going to go up there, you know, two, two days before the fight, and um, you know, obviously the way the way the day before. So, you know, I'm just going to stay in familiar territory as long as I can, and um, you know, just get up there a couple of days before the fight and you know, get the job done and, and get out of there. Well, Paul, it's uh, it's been great to speak to you. This is an event that's created quite a quite a stir and uh, a lot of attention in Toowoomba, and of course that's because 
uh, Paul Gallen is coming to Toowoomba to fight our uh, local fighter. So we look forward to having you uh, up in Toowoomba. I'm sure while you won't be the most popular man here, I'm sure you'll get great hospitality in our wonderful city. And and uh, and no doubt we uh, we appreciate you giving us your time today. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in uh, in January. No worries. Thanks, mate. See you later.